Hi, this is Pre-Calc Notes 5.2, Verifying Identities. An, ad an identity, as we noted last time, is an equation that is always true for all variables, values of the variable. For instance, sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to 1. That's true for all x. So to verify an identity, you have to show both sides of the equal sign are exactly the same. Now, there is a very specific way to do this. And so you have to follow this procedure because this is what's acceptable. If you try to do it your own way, well, you just aren't communicating properly with other mathematicians. We want to communicate properly with other mathematicians. So that's what we want to do. So number one, work exclusively on one side of the equality at a time. Now, with this, you can't move terms from side to side. This is not like solving. You want to pry apart one side and make sure that it looks like the other side eventually. And also you can't multiply or divide both sides by a term. You work on one side exclusively and make sure that it looks like the other side. Uh, work and some other ideas, work on the more difficult side first. Look for opportunities to factor, add fractions, square a binomial or create a monomial denominator. Ooh. Use common identities to switch things over to simpler terms. Try to convert everything to sine and cosine. Get in there and try anything, something. Just looking at it will not help you. You have to work them out. So it's like a puzzle where you try some things. If it doesn't work, erase, come back, and then work on it some more. That's what we're doing. I always loved identities when I was in school because, number one, you have the right answer right in front of you. You know where you got to get to. And number two, it was like little puzzles. Okay, so let's look at this first one. So with this first one, what I try to do is, well, what I like to do is try to maybe draw a little dotted line here to note that I am working on one side exclusively and I try to get it looking like the other. And so if I do that, I look at this side and I know that when I see cosine squared or sine squared, there are identities that get me all in terms of one thing. So if I look at the right side, everything here is in terms of cosine. So what can I get rid of on the left side? Well, I can get rid of the sine squared. So what we do is we go back to our identities from the last section. That's the wrong one. Here it is. And where is that sine squared cosine? Oh, there it is. Okay, so I know that sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to 1. So I know that the sine squared is equal to 1 minus the cosine squared or the cosine squared is equal to 1 minus the sine squared. So I can eliminate one of those in my problem that I do have. And so I want to eliminate this, and so that's what I'm going to do. So I take this cosine squared, and this is a beta, minus. This sine squared is equivalent to 1 minus the cosine squared beta, because that's the Pythagorean identity. The right side you can write again, but I'm not going to write it again. Then I just simplify terms here. If I go plus, negative, plus, this is just 2 cosine squared beta minus 1. Is that the same thing as this side? Now I do have to write this to show that I do have equality and equivalency. And so this has just verified and proved my identity. What I learned in college was that you could go QED or else you could put the X here. What I've done since I started teaching is that I like putting a little box here with a smile. That means that you have finished your proof and you are happy. Ooh, does that look like a smile? I don't know. Okay, so number two, what are we going to do with this one? Should we work on the right side to get to the left or the left to get to the right? Well, for me, it's a little bit easier to get a common denominator and try to sandwich it in there than to break this apart. So I have this right here, add fractions. Let's try add fractions. That's one of my techniques. So on the left side, and maybe I don't have enough room here, but on the left side, I'm going to try to get a common denominator, which is the tangent. So 1 over the tangent of theta plus tangent squared theta over the tangent theta. Will that equal that? I don't know. Let's see. I put the numerators together. And this is all over the tangent of theta. Ooh, this is maybe looking pretty good now. What I need this to get to is the 
secant squared. So I go back to my formula sheet here again, 5.1, and I look, do I have one? Yeah, there it is right there. 1 plus the tangent squared is equal to the secant squared. And so I go back to my sheet. And so this is just equal to the secant squared in the numerator. And in the denominator, I have the tangent. Is that what I wanted? Yep. Look at that. They gave me the right answer, and I got there. Beautiful. I love this stuff. Oh, don't forget your smiley face. I'll make it bigger this time so you can see the actual smile. There it is. I'm happy. All right, what about this next one? Well, there's a couple things going on here, and if you look at your steps up above, it says maybe expand this. Once again, you won't always be working on the left side to get to the right side. Sometimes it's the right to get to the left, but maybe my examples here are faulty. But if I look at this, I got one plus the sine of y times one. Okay, now what happens here? Is sine an odd function or an even function? If you remember, it is an odd function. So the sine of negative y is negative sine of y. So I can change this to this. And I can show that to you here, 5.1. And here it is right here. Sine of negative theta is equal to negative sine because that's odd. So I'm going back to my notes. That's what works out. And so when I do this, I'm going to expand this to try to get to the right side. So if I have um, one foil, look at the middle terms will drop out. So all I'm left with is one minus sine squared y. Remember we put the squared over the sine like this. And is this equal to the cosine squared? Well, in actuality, this is representative of one of our identities. So we could possibly leave it right now and say, oh, this is one of our identities. We've proved it. But let's just go and finish this off and show that the left side is the same as the right side. There you go. Okay. You might want to jump ahead and try this one. But once again, this one has two terms. If I put them together, I might get it to look like this. So I'm going to try that again. So number four, tangent of theta plus cotangent. That's one over the tangent. Now, I could change this all to sine and cosine and get a common denominator that way, but I decided to do this. And, and changing everything to sine and cosine is somewhat a good technique, but we'll just do it this way right now. So, oh, this one looks similar to the one above. Common denominator, this is tangent squared over tangent plus 1 over the tangent. Add that up. Tangent squared theta plus 1. Oh, this one looks very similar to the one above it. So the secant squared theta over the tangent of theta. Is that what we got? Oh, it's not. How did they get that? Uh-oh. Well, let's try to maybe break this down a little bit. Looks like one of my secants is going to cancel. So I'm going to change this tangent to sine over cosine. And since it's in the denominator, I'm going to flip it like this. And if you look at this, secant squared, secant squared is the same thing as 1 over the cosine. So I have 1 over the cosine squared times cosine theta over sine of theta. This cancels with this, and so now I'm left with 1 over the cosine times 1 over the sine. Well, that is the secant times the cosecant. And that's what we want. OK? Now, you might have done this a little bit differently. And maybe switching to sine and cosine straight away would have made it less steps to figure this out. I'm not sure. Maybe you can go find that out. But regardless, I'm done. I showed that one side's equal to the other. And I'm finitoed. Remember, work on one side exclusively and get it to look like the other. Sometimes if you really get stuck, we let you work on one side and work on the other side until you show that they're the same. But for most part, you should work on one side and show it is equal to the other. All right, that's all I got for this. You'll work on some examples in class. And that's what you really have to do is get in there and try some things.
Thank you very much. Have a great day.